Hey guys, how you doing? In another location, I have to admit, I am looking forward to getting back to what passes as a studio uh, in my house, or at least some kind of studio, because these places, really, I love them, they're fantastic, but at the same time, they really don't have what I need at all. For example, this place has no desk, it has no chair, it has this couch that's about six inches off the ground. Or, oh, guy like me, it's a hell of a time trying to get out of it. But in addition to that, um, well, I've got nothing proper to sit a camera on. So anyway, enough of my complaining. Let's go ahead and talk about something I haven't discussed in a long time, and that's Falcon Heavy. So seriously, what's going on with Falcon Heavy? Why has it been so long? Because to be honest, the last time Falcon Heavy took to the skies, my channel didn't even exist. In many ways, watching Falcon Heavy fly on the few occasions that it did fly was one of the major things that inspired me to get started with a spaceflight YouTube channel in the first place. Here's the deal, it has such a huge payload compared to Falcon 9, compared to anything really as far as mass is concerned, and its price per kilogram is lower than any rocket that's currently in service. Indeed, it's gonna be lower than any rocket that's projected to exist exist with the exception of Starship. So why the hell isn't SpaceX using it until just now? Now, before I go any further, I know I keep mentioning things like this, but you know, one of the main reasons that I'm here is to cover spaceflight related issues that not a lot of other people are actually covering. And one of the biggest things that I'd like to be talking about, or rather that I am talking about, that all was very strangely worded, wasn't it? Anyway, the main thing that I've been focusing on are unique things that's happening in the field of British space flight, such as what they're doing about space junk. Over the course of the next three years, the United Kingdom is going to be spending a hundred million pounds on dealing with space debris. That's something that no other country is doing, at least not to that extent. It's a big deal. And there's a lot of things that the UK is doing that other countries are not unique and exciting things. Anyway, those videos will be linked at the end of this video. If you want to check them out, please do. Back to Falcon Heavy. Now, one of the most important things to keep in mind about Falcon Heavy's capabilities is just how much more mass it can haul to higher orbits than Falcon 9 can. In theory, Falcon 9 can haul actually quite a lot to higher orbits, 8.3 metric tons to geosynchronous transfer orbit. However, that's not the whole story. Those 8.3 tons can only be delivered by Falcon 9 if Falcon 9 is used in a fully expensive mode, something that SpaceX hasn't used that rocket for at all, to my knowledge, aside from the times when the rocket has failed to land properly. Reusability is the big advantage of Falcon 9 and the things that allow it to remain competitive. So Falcon Heavy has a massive advantage when it comes to payload, especially up to geosynchronous orbit. Falcon 9, at least in principle, can only haul about 5 0.8 tons up to geosynchronous transfer orbit if you reuse the booster. And if you're hauling it all the way to geosynchronous orbit without dropping it off in a transfer orbit, which some military payloads demand, the payload drops off even more than that. Falcon Heavy, on the other hand, can deliver over 8 to tons to geosynchronous transfer orbit if you reuse all of the core stages, which is the only way that you can get the price down to under a hundred million dollars. Falcon 
Falcon line, of course, cannot do this. And on top of that, Falcon Heavy can deliver colossal payloads up to low Earth orbit and substantial payloads all the way out to Mars and Pluto. So why hasn't it been doing it? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, you SpaceX hater you. This is not the kind of payloads that SpaceX talks about on their website. Well, to be honest, the SpaceX website is kind of misleading when it's talking about payloads. All of these payloads reflect a completely expendable mode, which of course would make the rocket far more expensive. And honestly, I don't think SpaceX is ever going to use a fully expendable mode for any of their rockets. So the Falcon 9, we're actually talking about 16.2 metric tons or so out to low Earth orbit. And as I said before, about 5.8 tons if you want to reuse the booster out to geosynchronous transfer orbit. And this applies to Falcon Heavy as well. Falcon Heavy's capabilities out to low Earth orbit, while impressive, are not quite the same as the website says. According to Elon Musk, you lose 10% of your performance if you reuse just the two side boosters and expend the core stage, and it drops down to 30 tons to LEO if you reuse all three stages. And that's even more noticeable if you're going to geosynchronous orbit. It drops down to 8 tons to GTO instead of the 22 plus tons that's listed here if you reuse all three stages, which is the only thing that gives Falcon heavy a competitive edge on price point. Now, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah. Well, some people would talk about a lack of customers, but in reality, the other heavy launch vehicles have gone up since then. Ariane 5, for example, deploying James Webb, and also three launches of the Delta IV Heavy, while Falcon Heavy has been inactive. Now, in theory, Falcon Heavy should be able to beat Delta IV Heavy hands down as far as cost is concerned, so why have these various contracts been going to ULA and their outdated expendable rockets? Well, there are a couple of very key reasons that I've mentioned in the past. Reasons that are going to keep Falcon Heavy not quite so competitive against certain versions of ULA rockets for certain cargoes. And that, of course, is fairing size. Have a look at this. This is the problem that Falcon Heavy continues to face and has faced since 2019. It has a fairing that's no bigger than Falcon 9's, so it really doesn't matter how much of a payload it can theoretically deliver, if your satellite is too big for the fairing, it's not going to work. And there's another consideration as well. The Delta IV Heavy has made many, many successful flights. It is a tried and proven rocket, whereas Falcon Heavy has only flown three times. And on those three occasions, it really didn't even deliver very large payloads. The first payload was, of course, Elon Musk's te Tesla Roadster, 1200 150 kilograms, followed by the Arabsat 6A, 6,465 kilograms, and then finally the U.S. Air Force STP-2, 3,700 kilograms. All of these being fairly small payloads. Now the Arabsat 6A admittedly was probably too big of a satellite for Falcon 9 to deliver into a geosynchronous orbit. However, the other one? Falcon 9 might have been able to manage it, and even if it couldn't, these are not colossal payloads, and payloads that Atlas V and Vulcan Centaur could definitely handle. So here's the question. Are there really payloads for Falcon Heavy? Is this the reason that it's gone through a 40-month dry spell? And are we still facing that sort of problem in the future? And also, what does this mean for Starship? So if that is indeed the case, if Falcon Heavy simply doesn't have a whole lot of cargoes that are worthy of its capabilities, if there aren't enough customers for this huge amount of mass that Falcon Heavy can carry up to low Earth orbit or even much further than that, then what use is Starship going to be? 
And I think that's a question that we really need to be asking now that Starship is about to make its first orbital flight. Is it going to have the same kind of things happen? Is it going to make a demonstration flight, drop off a couple of payloads, maybe exclusively for SpaceX, a whole bunch of Starlink satellites or something like that, and then it isn't going to have any customers afterwards? And as I've mentioned before, this problem extends to military payloads that are going up to geosynchronous orbit as well. It's, it's a very, very particular issue with Starship and all of these other extremely large heavy rockets such as New Glenn also. And I mentioned this in another video. Tori Bruno did a uh, in-depth investigation of Starship's capabilities and determined that really all it could do is deliver a large amount of payloads load up to LEO and then it would run out of gas. It needs to refuel in low Earth orbit before it can really deliver any payload beyond that. Now, that can possibly change if you add a third stage, put something else into the fairing. It's a very big fairing. Could certainly carry a third stage that would be capable of delivering a substantial payload out to geosynchronous orbit. But you have to develop that third stage, and that third stage isn't even under development or any sort of study right now, at least as far as we know. So what does this really mean for Starship? And indeed, what is it mean for Falcon Heavy in the future? Well, believe it or not, I've got good news for everybody. Starship, even in a worst case scenario, actually doesn't need any customers. It has built-in customers already. The Starlink constellation is going to be absolutely colossal. It's going to require Starship's massive fairing in order to deploy the version 2 Starlink satellites that are necessary to make the whole project profitable. Elon Musk is said as much. So Starship is going to be absolutely essential for that part alone. And then on top of that, of course, Starship also has a very important role to play in the Artemis mission as the chosen vehicle for the human landing system. And then, of course, there's also the journey to Mars. You're not going to be able to colonize Mars without lots and lots of Starships. And the colonization of Mars is going to be funded by the mass of amounts of money that's going to come out of Starlink. This is the plan in any event. Starship is not a vehicle designed for the current market or even for the foreseeable market. It's for a market that's been created by Elon Musk with a journey to Mars as the long-term objective. It's really a cool idea and I hope it's successful because the end result is amazing. But and by the same token, Falcon Heavy is going to be a vehicle of choice to deliver military satellites out to geosynchronous orbit and, of course, other future NASA payloads that it's already slated to carry. Yes, other vehicles have carried NASA and other satellites over the last three years, but that may just be a matter of bad luck. Some of Falcon Heavy's cargoes have just been delayed because the satellites haven't been ready yet. Now, that doesn't mean Falcon Heavy is going to dominate because it still has these fairing size problems and that's something that Vulcan Centaur is going to capitalize on. Vulcan Centaur, at least until Starship has a third stage, is going to be able to deliver larger payloads, at least in terms of volume, than Falcon Heavy or Starship are going to be able to deliver out to geosynchronous orbit, at least until the whole concept of low Earth orbit refueling has been mastered. But even after that, Vulcan Centaur will still have a purpose because the Centaur 5 upper stage is also relightable and also capable of being refueled, which means it can carry a substantial amount of cargo up to low Earth orbit, refuel with a lot less propellant than Starship is going to require, and then fly its 20-some-odd tons even further out. 
Now sure, Starship has a much, much larger payload, but is every customer going to need 100 tons? I really doubt it. If Vulcan Centaur and the Centaur 5 upper stage can also be refueled, I think many customers will be perfectly happy with 20 tons going out to the moon or any other destination. What do I mean by all of this? Well, I think it's going to be a very, very exciting period of competition between all the major players involved. Yes, SpaceX has certain advantages, but so does ULA. And I do believe that as time goes on, at least assuming that those damn BE-4 engines actually get into service, which is by no means guaranteed, Vulcan Centaur is going to be involved in some very lively competition with both Falcon Heavy and Starship for military cargoes and just about everything else. I think everybody Everybody is going to prosper, everybody's going to make a substantial profit, and spaceflight is just going to explode. And really, everybody should be happy about that, and nobody should want a monopoly from SpaceX or anyone else. We've seen what monopolies do to the cost of spaceflight in the past, and we don't need to see that happen again. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no sign of that happening anytime soon. So Falcon Heavy fans, you got nothing to worry about because this rocket has some important missions coming up in the near future and it has capabilities that neither Starship nor Vulcan can carry out. And Vulcan fans, your rocket can carry out a number of unique tasks as well. And of course, Starship has some amazing tasks in the future, including the colonization of the solar system. What could be more exciting than that? Smash that like and hit that subscribe, guys. I really need to get to 100,000 subscribers if for no other reason for you guys to watch me sweat while Starship gets ready to make its orbital flight while Vulcan Centaur keeps pushing back its launch date. So please hit that subscribe and also check out my other videos that I've been making about the unique and innovative aspects of European space flight and is all Always stay angry about space.